I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm really, really broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm, oh, what's up? I'm not broke. You might be broke. Maybe you clicked on this video because you're broke and you're tired of being broke. If you're a graphic designer, I understand that pain. For many, many years, I was broke and for a lot of different reasons. And I see a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of creatives specifically really struggle because of various different reasons in their life. So today's gonna be one of my probably most important videos I've ever done. I'm gonna share some really practical things and talk about why creatives really struggle. Now, you may be a creative that's just burnt out and ready to go get another job. That is the end of your rope, and I don't want you to be at the end of your rope. I don't want you to be on a rope at all. I want you to be excited and pumped up and, and just ready to have the best career you could possibly imagine because being an artist, being a graphic designer is super rewarding if you're getting paid well, if you're taking care of yourself. And so today we're gonna jump into that. I'm gonna share some really important things that I think are very important to me. And through my journey, I'll share a little bit of that. And I'm wearing this shirt today for a specific reason. Now I'm not sponsored by BetterHelp, but this video is going to tie back to them and why I'm wearing this shirt today. So like my shirt says, how are you? You may not be doing great and maybe you are doing great. If you are, either way, I'd love to know down in the comments. I really love to get to know everybody that's watching these videos and I appreciate you coming today. Today's a very sentimental and very important video for me because I'm gonna get a little bit vulnerable and that vulnerability just talks about some of my shortcomings. I've been through a lot of my life from being a homeless kid to struggling throughout my career to having ups and downs. A lot of people know what it's like to struggle and especially creatives, they call it the starving artist, right? There's a reason why we've been given that name. I grew up in a household with parents that were very strict, very strong, but also not always there. And I had one step parent and I had one dad and you know, it just was very rocky upbringing. And we were the kind of household that didn't do counseling, that didn't do therapy, that didn't do coaching. It was all about figure your stuff out, no crying, quit your sniffling, all that. It was about being tough and pushing through it. And it made me into a resilient person, but at the same time, I started to bury a lot of those insecurities, a lot of those fears, a lot of those pains, and I buried those things. And those are eventually, like sweeping things under the rug, those are eventually gonna come back up and they're gonna affect other areas of your life. And this is why I'm saying this, is I know that there are areas and things that have happened from your childhood to adulthood and into wherever you are now that are affecting your life and your career as a graphic designer. One of the quotes that I really love by one of my mentors and former business partners of Tag Talks, his name's Rollo Lopez, and he says, 90% of your business problems are personal problems. Because that's such a good quote, I need to say it one more time. 90% of your business problems are personal problems in disguise. And so if you don't really understand that, you need to take a minute to really think on that for a moment because it's really important you understand that the, the breakthrough that you need inside of your career is going to happen when you solve these personal problems. And so the first step to solving your personal problems is accepting that you are not a perfect person, that you are a flawed person. We are fundamentally all flawed in some way. No one lives a perfect life. We all experience challenges in our life and those are what make us unique, but also can hold us back. And when I've dealt with this, there's three main areas that I want you to understand that you may not even realize and this is where your breakthrough aha moment is going to be. First one, limiting beliefs around money. Money isn't everything. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is the root of all evil. There's a lot of sayings that have been planted in us into our subconscious because it's happened so many times that we're not even realizing. Money is a tool. It's not evil. It can be used for good. It doesn't grow on trees, but it's printed on paper, which grows on trees, which is kind of ridiculous. A lot of these quotes don't even really mean anything, but a lot of people take them to heart and they think that money is a bad thing. Oh, you know, I'm not greedy. I'm not this, I'm not that. Money either makes you more of what you already are or it doesn't. So here's, the, here's an example of that. If you get a bunch of money, you're either gonna become greedier or you're gonna become more giving. So if you're a good person and you think that money's gonna turn you bad, well, maybe that's something that you need to work on. So money is the first thing, limiting beliefs around money. The second one, and this is a really big one that I think this is an area that I needed to learn the most and this is what helped me in my business the most, is setting boundaries. We are really bad as creatives sometimes of setting boundaries, especially if you're an introvert. If you're not setting boundaries with people and setting the expectations the right way from the very beginning, that relationship is going to be doomed 
from the very beginning. So setting boundaries, what you're okay with, what you're not okay with, and being willing to say no. This is an area that I've put a lot of time, energy, and effort into is being willing to say no and walk away from deals that aren't a fit for me and not just take them because of the money. Again, tying back to a limiting belief around money, but boundaries are extremely important. The third most common area that I see creatives and entrepreneurs in general really struggle with is a lack of confidence. Now that can be in sales, that can be in delegating to their team, running the company, finances. If there's an area that you're lacking confidence in, this is where you need to level up. This is where you need to invest energy, time, and effort. Your confidence as an entrepreneur, as a creative, if you're dealing with people or you're dealing with people on a team and you're trying to build something real and get out of the poorhouse, this is something you're gonna have to spend time and money on. This is an area that I didn't lack in in sales, but I lacked in in other areas and I still lack in to some ways, but I'm working on those things. I'm, I'm aggressively and mindfully working on these areas that I'm not confident in. And finances has been one of those that I've been learning about, I've been paying into, I've been investing into, and I'm getting better and better at that. So those are the three areas. Money and limiting beliefs around money, boundaries and actually how to set those, and confidence, whether it's around sales, delegation, whatever. So those are the three things I wanted to start with. So I'm curious, out of those first three, which of those do you think that you struggle with more? Limiting beliefs around money, boundaries, or confidence? I would like to know, drop a comment down below, let me know who you are, and I'll make sure I try to comment back to you. All right, so now that we've gotten that out of the way and you understand that we all have limiting beliefs, we all have challenges, we all have areas that we need to improve on, and that was a short list, there's a whole nother laundry list that I could come up with for that. The next piece of this is building a support system for yourself. If you want you have the understanding or the awareness, now you need to actually do something. And what I want you to do is to build a support system for yourself. So I got four strategies that I'm gonna share with you right now, yes, right now that are gonna help you start to build that support system. And the first one is taking advantage and investing into something like BetterHelp or some sort of local counselor, local therapist, and start to deal with whether trauma, challenges, hurts, habits, hangups, any of those things, I want you to invest into hiring somebody that's gonna help you work through the limiting beliefs, some of the challenges, and some of the areas in your life that you're struggling with. If you're financially broke, there's a reason for that, and there's a remedy for that. If you take that to a counselor or to a therapist, they're gonna help you work through that problem and help you work through those limiting beliefs. Now, you gotta be careful. Maybe they have limiting beliefs too. Just because they're counselors and therapists, they may not have good mindsets around money. And just a quick piece of advice, a little extra gold nugget for you, the Richest Man in Babylon is a very good book for you guys. I think Tom Clayson um, is a very good book for you guys to read that will help you get rid of some of those limiting beliefs around money. All right, the second one, and this is a good one too, this is one of the first areas that I started off with in about 2010, is you need to hire a personal coach. Hire a personal coach. A personal coach is going to help you work through your problems by asking you good questions. Now. That can be very similar to a therapist or to a counselor, but if you were to hire a personal coach, somebody like my former business partner, Raul Lopez, he's gonna take you through your business, your personal life, and he's gonna ask you questions and get to the root of why you're struggling financially and what your pain points are. Maybe you're not struggling financially, but you're burnt out and you're ready for a career change and you're just tired of it, the money isn't, isn't worth it to you anymore, and you wanna get out of your job and you wanna go work for yourself. This is an area where you should go hire a personal coach to help you put a plan into place by asking you the questions and giving you some more clarity. So hiring a personal coach is a really good step, and that's why I put it on this list. The third thing is for my fellow business owners, entrepreneurs, and creatives that are already out there making things happen. This is something I, I wish I would have done a lot sooner, and I did do this a little bit, but I didn't do it to the level I've been doing it in the last few years, and that is hiring a business coach or a business consultant to come into your company, look at what you've been doing, look at what you've not been doing, look processes and systems and people do you have involved, and do an overall assessment and help you get really clear because maybe you're spreading yourself too thin. There's a lot of different reasons. Maybe you're not prospecting enough. Maybe you're not keeping track of your finances. There's all kinds of reasons that you just can't see because you don't have the objectivity. Make the investment. When you make the investment into yourself, it's gonna pay huge dividends. I'm gonna keep saying that throughout this whole video. You need to hire outside experts who are highly skilled in areas that you are not. The other beauty of that in hiring any of these people so far before I get to number four is the accountability. Getting accountability. Now, what is accountability? Accountability is having somebody in your life holding you accountable for your abilities, not for your inabilities. My mentor, Nicholas Bailey, says that all the time. You are being held in account for your abilities, 
not your inability. So make sure that when you have a coach, you have a counselor, you have a therapist, they're not coming down on you, but they're encouraging you to follow through and to be accountable for the abilities that you already have, not the things that you don't have. All right, and that all being said, I brought up Nicholas Barely. That's the perfect segue for number four. And number four is get involved in community. That could be the Instagraphics Pro Network. That's a very good start. It's free, isn't gonna cost you a dime. And we got almost 600 amazing fellow creatives in there that you can do life with. You can be creative, you can get inspired by. And I am actively pushing to post more and more stuff in there. I'm working on some really big things behind the scenes that I was supposed to release last week, but I didn't, but it is coming hopefully this week, but I would love to see you guys in this community. And if the Instagraphics Pro Network isn't enough for you and you wanna take another step, you can do one-on-ones with me, or you can do group coaching with me. There are a lot of different opportunities out there and there are other groups that you can join as well, mastermind groups and, and coaching groups and local like uh, meetup groups. There is no excuse unless you're just not gonna take action. There's no excuse for you not to surround yourself with like-minded, like-hearted people who are gonna hold you accountable and putting yourself in community is one of the best ways to do that, to help you level up. Because like my dad said when I was really young, hang out with four millionaires and you'll become the fifth. So that's some really good advice I want to leave you with you guys. So I got another question, like I always do. I love to ask questions. My question this time is for you of which one of these do you guys already have or what is the first one that you are going to hire? Personal coach, business coach, maybe you're gonna join the community. Drop a comment down below, let me know. I try to respond to every comment. I wanna hear from you. Let me know what you guys are gonna do. What are you moving towards to help fix yourself, improve your life, and to get out of the broke house or the poor house? Just a quick story I wanted to share with you guys. I really struggled, and I think that my journey took three times, or maybe two or three times longer than it could have if I had applied some of the things that I've already told you in this video into my life. And when I actually went and found somebody and started putting myself around other creatives like myself, other agency owners, I actually bumped into a guy and we had a conversation about money and what we pay ourselves. And when he told me what he paid himself and he'd only been in for a couple years doing what I was doing, and I had been in for almost a decade at that point, I was like ready to fall out of my chair. He was paying himself six figures a year and I wasn't even paying myself half of that. And it was really frustrating to see how little I valued myself and my beliefs around money and what my personal worth was and how I felt about myself. And it was that conversation that changed everything for me of what I paid myself and it also doubled the income of my company that year. Just one conversation doubled the income of my company because I saw if this guy values himself and sees himself being worth this much, what do I saying about myself? I just put myself to his level. Okay, that's great. But if I'm way more experienced, way more talented and have a lot better of a repertoire and client base, I should be paying myself even more, right? You help more people, you change more lives, you should be paid adequately for doing so. So this is an important money belief that I had to change that really kept me, held me back for many, many years of my life and extended the timeline. If I were to do everything over again and to start from scratch my whole career, I'd probably be able to do it in half, if not one third of the time that I did it last time. I've been on this journey for 15 years. I could probably build everything from scratch, literally from zero in less than five years, maybe even three years. And I could be doing it a lot quicker and that would help you out a lot too. If I was gonna start all over, there are actually three things that I would definitely do differently that I wanna share with you guys to close this video out. The first one is my health. I was a serious workaholic, working 16, 18, 20 hour days, and my health really took a hit because of that. And this is something, whether it's your sleep, your diet, I was eating just terrible food, late at night, junk food, energy drinks. That's one advice I'll give you right now. If you're drinking energy drinks, Red Bull, Rockstars, Monsters, Throw that stuff, I wanna say, you know what, in the garbage. It's trash, you don't put that stuff in your body. Now, don't get me wrong, I still consume some caffeine. These Zevias are really good, but they don't have any harsh chemicals. They're all organic, they're non-GMO. Change, if you need caffeine still, I understand that, but change what you're putting in your body. If you're eating McDonald's, get rid of that out of your diet. Stop eating McDonald's, prepare food from home, get the blue ribbon or blue apron or whatever that, like, Order meals online. There's so many different resources for you. Make sure you get enough sleep. Buy yourself a good mattress. Do workouts. Make sure you're moving every day. Make sure you're stretching every day. Take care of yourself. I cannot stress this enough. A lot of artists, a lot of creatives sacrifice so much of their health in order to achieve and to follow their passions as designers or artists. This is a really bad combination and is going to catch up to you. It caught up to me and I could have moved a lot quicker and taken way better care of myself. And I'm glad I'm doing it now. I've changed now, but I want you to start as young as possible because this is an investment and your health is truly greater and is the greatest form of wealth that you have. 
The second thing I would do differently if I had to start all over again is not spreading myself too thin. I'm a visionary campaigner type personality. So I constantly have new ideas, new fun. And a lot of my ideas are really great. Not all of them are great, but a lot of them are great. And I, a lot of them could be significant, you know, money generating businesses, but are they in line with what my vision, my mission and my purpose is? Do not spread yourself too thin. Do not do too many projects. Do not take on too many businesses. This is an area where you're going to diffuse your focus. You're going to lose momentum. Stay focused, get to where you want to set some milestones for yourself in your business and say, Hey, if I do this, then I'm going to do this. Complete one project first before moving on because I have a book going on. I have courses. I have all kinds of stuff that I'm working on and none of them are finished. How does that serve you guys? And I'm seeing counselors and therapists on a weekly basis. Yes, betterhelp.com. I see my therapist every single week. She's helping me through a lot of different areas of my life, relationships, business, personal, family. There's all kinds of stuff that they can help you with, stuff that you didn't even know that you were struggling with. So make sure you go ahead and do that. The third one, and this is another area that I really feel like I struggle with, I jumped at things too quickly and that was because I felt like I wasn't moving fast enough, which is just foolish. And that's not rushing and understanding that you have enough time. There's plenty of time to get to where you want to. If you rush and you jump to things too quickly, you're gonna make harsh and rash decisions. They're gonna end up blowing back and costing you money. I did that when I moved my printing shop from down from Citrus Heights, California to downtown Sacramento, California. And when I did that, I lost a significant amount of my business. I didn't think it through. I was rushing. I just wanted to get to a bigger location. I didn't think the consequences through enough. And I didn't have a business coach or a personal coach or a therapist or anybody at that time. And if I did, I know I wouldn't have made that decision. I would have kept that location and opened up a new one because I would have added 30% to my revenue and that would have been great. So this is just something I want you to think about. These are important gold nuggets. If you need to watch this video through again, I want to encourage you to do that because I did share a lot, but this is it for today. I hope you got some really good nuggets out of it. Make sure you please, if you're getting value out of this, hit the like, hit the subscribe. And if you're ready to level up your career, you're ready, you're feeling, feeling stuck, you're done with feeling stuck, you want community, you want people, you want creatives around, you want to be inspired, check out the Instagraphics Pro Network on Facebook. I'll see you guys there. Make sure you fill out all the questions or I will hit deny. I promise you, you won't get it in if you don't fill out all the questions and I'll see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Make sure you share this content and until then, keep looking up.